Why? Hello and welcome everybody. Also, good morning. So, for those of you guys who know, I've been a bit down pretty much since the Affliction League launched due to the uh, Righteous Fire nerfs for the way I've played it. You know, I've tried counteracting those nerfs on the Inquisitor version by playing the Tula version instead of like the standard Aegis melding, which also, you know, works just fine. Our boy Juggernaut received the least amount of love since it has a higher time kind of like scaling life unless you're kind of going Warlock. And a lot of these uh, League Starter builds, by League Starter builds, I mean Righteous Fire builds, have known to be a bit more expensive now to break into the old tier that they once were. Um, and a, a big reason for this is because of the uh, new Adorn Jewel that came out. The Adorn Jewel is essentially a jewel that allows you to um, ramp up your regular jewels, but as we all know, jewels are expensive, Adorn is also very expensive. Nonetheless, though, uh, I have tried to kind of like do my normal strategy where I play, you know, uh, Trade League, and then after Trade League, I play SSF, and then after SSF, we played in a private league, and I really wanted to try to get Chieftain to work. And, and the main reason for Chieftain, also, by the way, Chieftain does work, I just have extremely high expectations for my Righteous Fire characters. Talk a little bit about Chieftain and why I've been playing it so much. With them nerfing Righteous Fire's base damage, aka it no longer scales off of a flat level, the best way to scale your Fire Trap, and even if you replace it for another skill, it's pretty much going to be plus level of gem. But because the plus level of gem doesn't really do much anymore for your Righteous Fire, this kind of leaves your Righteous Fire behind while you're scaling your Fire Trap. Chieftain has a nice advantage here, uh, where anyone who's played Chieftain knows about it, which is basically the Ascendancy node, Hinakora's Death Fury. It doesn't really matter if you keep scaling your Righteous Fire or not, you just need enough damage to consistently trigger your explosion in a mapping environment. And then you can kind of keep scaling your, uh, your single target, right? So, uh, like I said, I've played it in SSF now. I've played it in a private league. <clears throat> my SSF character, ironically, stronger than my private league character. Not sure how this always happens. But anyway, though, today I have been working on a more expensive POB since we're playing a league where you can find a lot of items. So this is my chieftain here, who I want to say is close to, like, immortality against, you know, regular content, not like the, the Valdo's Mage Blood content, right? But, like, in a more regular environment... But I will say that I think this character is probably going to cost oh, around 100 divines, maybe more, maybe a little less. I'm not sure. This is also before inflation hits, so I have no idea. Um, the damage can also go up massively if you were to replace the one item that gives you like immortality, which is Defiance of Destiny, with a plus one, plus one amulet. Uh, here's like an example. This is like a 26 dot multi plus one, plus one. If you were to plug this over the Defiance of Destiny, if you look at the damage here. Right, that shoots up, but that's pretty much only your your uh, fire traps damage. Very little of that is the RF. The RF here is like 3.4 million, and if I flip that over, let's see, where's our Defiance of Destiny? We'll just smack that over. You can see the damage is 3.1, so pretty much all of that is your single target fire trap scaling. Um, now, to talk about this character, right? This character, um, one of my biggest problems with Chieftain in the past is... Defiance of Destiny came out last league, and without Defiance of Destiny, I feel Chieftain's recovery is still really good, but it's not like immortal. So I'll give you an example. Juggernaut, when I'm mapping, right, you have this beautiful ascendancy node called Unbreakable, and you can synergize it in many different ways, going like Fourth Vow with Zabakwa, etc., just stack armor. Um, this shrugs damage off to literally become like one or like five, right? So you have a normal standard hit that's reduced by your armor or whatever it is you're doing, and Unbreakable is like an extra layer of protection. The reason that's good is when you are taking so many incoming hits, when you're reducing them from 100 to like 5, you don't die when you take 50 of them at the same time, right? And in the past, on the Inquisitor build, we would go block base with Aegis. It's the same, same concept, except instead of mitigating it to like 1, you mitigate it to like a couple hundred, but then Aegis is constantly replenishing. Chieftain is more of like the mitigation champ where you can easily get 90 max all res, and because you get 90 max all res, you're going to convert physical damage to X element, which then gets mitigated a ton because it's against your 90 res, but you don't have anything to, to save you from that chip damage. So when you're constantly taking a bunch of hits, even though your mitigation is amazing, eventually you're going to die unless you have insane recovery. That's where Defiance of Destiny comes in. Now, can you, let's not do that right now, Windows. Thank you very much. 
So <clears throat> again, the reason I didn't put this in my POB like last league, for example, is last league you could craft amulets like this and your trade-off was losing like 30% of your character's total damage more, uh, which was just too much, too, too much to lose for me, right? Um, but now with the plus one, plus one literally not working, I don't know why this keeps popping up now. With the plus one, plus one literally not working, I think Defiance of Destiny is a stronger pick. Now, I want to talk about a few more things with this character, and do know that this character's POB is listed on my website for pox.net, which you can find located right over here, RF Chieftain. Uh, the primary reason I'm making this video, I guess I forgot to even start with it, is I'm going to be rebuilding this character in Trade League. Um, so, I, like I said, I've done my uh, my typical run through POE right now, and I got a little bored, and I, you know, everyone's having so much fun in Trade League, I figure, why not come back and enjoy it, right? Making 100 Divines this league is not really that hard. You can Alf and go 100 Divines, no problem. I'm actually already starting to build some of the stuff here. So if we go to Affliction League, I played the Mono Righteous Fire character. It's just not really for me. It's an incredibly strong character. I just am not a fan of the archetype. Um, I won't really go into it too much, but I already started uh, hoarding some stuff for the Chieftain character, so I'm very happy. One of the cool things about it, though, is I'll be using Annihilation's Approach. Something I haven't really used in my RF builds before, primarily because you would always use Legacy of Fury because Scorch is so strong. Well, on Chieftain, yes, you can still go the typical minus res Scorch route, but I really wanted to make use of the Stand Still Ascendancy. Normally, Standing Still does not really work, but with 90 max res, 70% Fizz taken as X Element, um, and uh, Defiance of Destiny, oh boy, you are Standing Still if you really want to. So this damage here is like slightly padded in favor of Chieftain, right? So we do use Frenzy when mapping, so I'll take that off. And if you are, th this will come from Adorn, so you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, if you are not low life, so the enemy is not low life, it's only 10 million. And if you're not standing still, then it goes down to 4 million. But the reality is you are standing still. I do believe even Shield Charge counts you as standing still. And with this damage, most things will get to low life pretty quickly, unless it's maybe an uber and then it's going to take some time. So that means your punishment kicks in. And when your punishment kicks in, they're officially on low life, right? <clears throat> um, yeah, so to talk about the, the movement speed again on Annihilation's Approach. Annihilation's Approach is pretty awesome for two reasons. Number one, cannot be chilled or frozen, means you don't need to run the Brine King Pantheon, so you can actually change it to something else. Um, number two you get permanent adrenaline. The permanent adrenaline is going to make this character feel so nice. Um, a lot of the time, what sucks about left side of the tree, specifically like my RF builds, you can't really go that fast. And the, the typical, you know, answer for that is basically like buy mage blood and then you can go fast. Annihilation's approach are 30% movement speed boots with permanent adrenaline, which is what 100% increased damage, 20% movement speed, 20% attack speed and cast speed, I think maybe 25. And you can also buy them corrupted with extra movement speed. So I think this is going to be a really fun, like, softcore zoomer that's going to be very tanky as well. It's not doing the traditional magic find. I know a lot of people are going crazy for magic find. I'm not really going to be doing that. But anyway, I just wanted to pretty much make this video to kind of explain what's going on. Um, and that I'm going to be back in Trade League for probably like a week to uh, kind of have fun with this character. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Remember, if you do want this POB, it will be listed on my website, so you can go snag it there. So I'm going to catch you guys all later. Thanks for watching, everybody. Remember, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And I want to see some more RF Chieftains coming out. So I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody.